Welcome once again to The Breakfast uh, this morning on Plus TV Africa. We apologize, we may not be able to have uh, our guests join us for the conversation on Afghanistan and uh, current situation in, uh, in that country. Um, hopefully before we also wrap up the conversation, we can play, you know, show you, you know, a few clips uh, to at least paint a very, very clear picture of what it is at the airports in Kabul. There is uh, clips of people fleeing the country, uh, doing all they possibly can to ensure that they survive what uh, the country is currently dealing with. There's also, of course, uh, you know, clips of the United States Army trying to protect what they can in, uh, in, uh, the, at the airports. People scrambling to get into airplanes, as, uh, you know, as many of them as they can fit into one plane as possible. Um, it's really, really shocking scenes. But I'm, I'm going to share uh, something from um, uh, someone who uh, I saw at, uh, one of her comments um, that basically details exactly what my thoughts are on this issue and her name is claire daly um, and she says if you want to understand why afghanistan has fallen to the taliban examine the years of foreign intervention of u.s supported by europe it was the entry of these troops not their departure that has resulted in this day and that's pretty much what i had said earlier you know that it's not um you know, the, the decision of the Joe Biden or Donald Trump administration to exit Afghanistan that has led to what Afghanistan is currently dealing with and what the world is currently seeing. It is mostly the entry of these troops in the first place. Um, and of course, you know, the, the things that are still halfway documented, some of them undocumented, the atrocities that have occurred in the last 20 years that has resulted, the failure and the politics, the, you know, the financial grain, uh, gain, rather, the, the, the national interest, political interest that have come, you know, as a, you know, as a priorities instead of the fight against insurgency and the defeat of the Taliban. It's also, all, you know, a little bit more of, you know, the, the personal beliefs, Islamic beliefs of some in some regard that has led to some of all these things that we're seeing today. Um, it might be difficult to, to explain the extent to which uh, the country itself has been damaged in the last 20 years. Um, and I also made mention that, yes, you might blame the U.S. and the West and, and Europe and all of that, but you cannot take away blame from Afghanistan itself as a nation and its government. Um, in the last 20 years, they've had enough time to develop their own structure, to develop their own security agencies, to develop whatever was necessary for them to stand strong as a nation and be able to defend themselves at a time like this. But they failed. And um, the president simply, you know, fled the country because that, that's what he has left to do, to flee and go somewhere else with his family. Um, whereas the, 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 the um, you know, results of, of terrible leadership and failure of government for the last 20 years, whether you want to you know, say it is not their fault only maybe because they, you know, they were, um, were held back by the West and by the United States, it, does, it really doesn't matter. But they've also you know, obviously failed to strengthen the country itself, to strengthen their security agencies in the last 20 years. And that's why they simply crumbled like a pack of cards in you know, just about two weeks. Um, it's sad. We've related this to what we're dealing with here in Nigeria and, you know, the fact that we should look at these things with as much urgency as possible to understand how important it is that we start to do what is necessary here in Nigeria to ensure that we don't ever get to that stage. Um, if we're going to put our foot down against insurgency, I saw someone asking me yesterday, you know, how do people put um, uh, religion over humanity, which was a very, very big question. How do you put religion over humanity? Um, but if we don't put our foot down in Nigeria and ensure that we completely rid the country of terrorists and terrorist ideologies, and that includes sacking people that have terrorist ideologies, that have had terrorist ideologies when they were young and in, in, and in the world. And you don't simply say that they've, or they were young and they were kids back then when they, were, when they made these statements and so they've, they've changed now. That doesn't work. Um, that's the type of foot that we should put down if we truly want to rid Nigeria of um, insurgents, of terrorists, of bandits, whatever name that you want to call them, um, going forward. And that also in includes arresting and prosecuting people who commit crimes against humanity, people who commit murder, who, who, people who commit arson in every single part of the country, in Southern Kaduna, in Borno, in Katsina, in Joss, wherever you want to name, in Benue State. Every single one of them should be prosecuted to ensure that Nigeria um, takes its stand against murder, against insurgency, against communal clashes, against death. Um, and until we do that, we're going to keep, you know, dancing the same dance until it becomes too late. So what lessons should we learn? They're pretty obvious. Um, is Nigeria doing what, is, what it, it should do? I don't think so. 
Um, is Nigeria putting you know, its, its foot down? Is Nigeria taking a stance against some of these things? I don't think so. I think we're still playing around with it. Um, and I hope that it doesn't eventually get to swallow us. The fear really is running high, not just in Afghanistan, but especially what I've seen from people in other parts of the world, especially people in neighboring Afghanistan, because definitely this conflict will spill over and affects them in one way or another. Um, people and groups that are especially of concern are women and children. We know that in any situation of war and chaos, they are the most vulnerable and they should be protected, but unfortunately, they're the ones who really bear the brunt of these actions. And when people remember the misrule of the Taliban back then, it really explains how much and why people should fear so much because suppression of women's rights, child abuse, and things like that. So it's, it's really, you know, reminds us of the president's running away, shows that the political class would definitely look out for their own interests. They tell you they're there to serve you, but they're definitely looking out for their own interest. You know, when this was happening, the, the, there was no presidential declaration that, you know, there's a state of emergency, this is about to happen, you know, find safety, nothing, no effort by the government. The president fled the country and left the people to scamper for safety. Most of them would be trapped in that country under the misrule of the Taliban, even though they've promised that they're going to have a peaceful transition of power under their new Afghan president. We don't have faith in that based on what we've seen in the past. And well, no, linking it up to how we wrap it up and, you know, link to our own Nigerian situation. You know, Mr. Tunde Kolawali went on there when we talked about this during um, Off the Press saying that it really portends a lot for Nigeria and it makes us ask questions regarding what lessons can we learn and when we compare that to the Boko Haram insurgency, is Nigeria really nearing the Afghanistan reality? It seems so. Yeah, um, you know, but you know, I understand. You know, you, um, you mentioning the women and children, you know, part which can never be ignored with times of crisis and, uh, and war. Um, you know, but I, I think that every single life, um, you know, is important here. Um, yes, they are victims of war, but at the same time, there's also men who will be victims of all of this. Not everybody is a fighter. Not everybody is born to carry a gun. Uh, they will all be victims of all of this. And unfortunately, it is the poor. I think it's mostly the poor uh, that will be the biggest victims um, in this situation. Um, the United States itself, you know, has a lot of soul searching to do here. And I hope that the world can see some of all these things and realize that um, world politics has always been very, very dirty. And the things that you see in the media, the things that, you know, other um, foreign media organizations might tell you, uh, you know, with regards to the motives of government sometimes can be really, 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 really false. Um, but it's, it's, an, it's, it, it's a sad picture uh, of what is currently going on. Just look at this. It's a really, really sad picture of what is going on in the world today. Not all of you can enter that plane, Oga. You, that it is, uh, it is holding ladder. Um, it's, it's really, really sad. Really, really sad. And, and no country deserves any of all of this. Failure of leadership, sadly, sadly, never affects the people who truly fail the people. Because they are rich enough to fly to any other part of, you know, of the world and seek asylum. They are rich enough to, to, to relocate and buy an island someplace. The failure of leadership never, never really affects them. It affects the people. And this is where it, you know, we, we should then bring back a conversation about how important it is when you're making a decision who takes over leadership for four years or for eight years here in Nigeria. Because their failure would, would last for either eight years or would last for 20 years, or would last for eternity. Exactly. The failure of those four years. So when you are making that decision because, oh, this person has failed, let's kick him out, or let's kick her out, um, elections are, aren't really about who you are taking out. They're more about who you are putting in there because it's the future that matters. So when you are angry with a particular government and you say, oh, this one is such a disaster, never let those emotions make you decide anybody but this person and go put yourself, you know, with the devil next. Um, it's a very, very important angle that I think, you know, Nigerians in particular need to learn. Um, it's not about who you're removing. It's really about who you're putting there. Because their actions and their failures would either last eight years, four years, or a whole lifetime. For Afghanistan, very likely this will last a lifetime for some people. Mm -hmm. Only right. God really knows just how much intervention it takes to restore civilian rule in that country. 
Really can't wait to see how this It'll ends. Be all right. Anyway, um, we need to go. Thanks a lot for being a part of our Monday morning uh, here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. If you missed out on any of our conversations, remember to catch up on uh, social media at uh, Plus TV Africa and uh, Facebook and Instagram. And same thing with our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Osao Gie Ogbawa. And I'm Aneta Felix.